In a previous video, I had suggested that we use explicit colors rather than numbers in GeoRegion value plot, and in this video, I want to give you an example of why I think that's useful. So here I have a list of the, or here I have something representing the continental U.S. states, which is like the U.S. states without Alaska and without Hawaii. And what is this? So I've named it with the variable name U.S., and it's not quite an entity, it's an entity class, which is like a group of entities. And I can get all of the different entities in that class by using the command entity list. So here are those 48 states that I was talking about. And for my, for my value that I want to use for the GeoRegion value plot, I want to use the longitude of each of these states. So how did I choose that? Well, I just chose a random, random state and looked at its possible entity properties. Okay, so for example, Tennessee, let's copy that. So there are all these different properties and I wanted one where we'd be able to see like very geographically how the number was changing. And so for something like ACT score, we're not gonna see that. But for something like longitude, which is the position like east to west, that we'll be able to see very directly on a map. And that's also why I got rid of Alaska and Hawaii, because I wanted there to be less of a scale, because Hawaii is so far away that that would change the scale of the differences in longitudes. And just one thing to say about these is just because you see one of these properties, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be known by Mathematica. So for example, in the Chinese provinces video, I had thought about using the flag of those provinces, but even though that's a property that I can plug in, it, Mathematica just returned missing for every province that I tried. So just because you see it listed here, all that means is that there is something of the same type of entity, like here it's an administrative division. There's something of that same uh, type of entity that does have that property, but not necessarily each of the entities you're looking at. So uh, let me go back here and let me save this with the name states. So I had mistakenly called this thing a list before, but it's not a list, it's an entity class. But now this states, it is a list. It's a list of entities. And so uh, let me get the longitudes of all of these. And just for a little difference, let me use a pure function for this. So uh, let me say pound bracket longitude. And so this is a function that takes as input an entity and as output returns its longitude. And then let me apply that to every entry in the states list okay, using slash at. Okay, so that's just the fanciest way I could come up with to get this list of longitudes. Um, a much more down to earth for us way of doing this, like much more in line with how we usually do it, is I could use the second type of iterator and say for each x in states, give me x brackets longitude. Okay, that gives me the exact same list. Okay, this is already a good start. So I have my list of regions. I have my list of quantities, and then let's put them together using an association thread. Okay, first is gonna be the list of keys. Second is gonna be the list of values. Okay, and there's an association. Okay, I can tell it by this symbol on the outside. And this is the kind of input that GeoRegion value plot likes, that or a list of rules. And let's see how it draws for this. And so, reason I would prefer, rather than giving numbers, I would prefer giving colors, is look at how few colors are showing up in this, in this picture. And let me choose something with more colors. Let me choose bright bands for my color function. So let me say color function bright bands. And let's zoom in with image size, let's say 800. 
So uh, there are only four colors showing up here. And let me show you how we can get many more colors than that by giving explicit colors rather than these numbers here. So I want to convert each of these into a number, or sorry, each of these um, degrees. I want to convert it into a color. So uh, let's do that using table. And let's have for each x in this longitudes list. And then what do I want to do? Well, first, let's get rid of the unit degrees. Because if I try to plug in something like this into an explicit color data, then it's not going to work because it's going to say it wants a number, not a, not a quantity like this. So how can I get rid of that? I'm going to use quantity magnitude. Okay, so exact same thing, it's just these degrees have gone away. And so uh, that's pretty good. I could do now, let's say, color data. And then I'm going to say bright bands for the gradient that I want. But they're all the same color. And do you see what the problem is? Problem is that for a color data like this, the input over here is supposed to be a number from 0 to 1. And anything less than 0 is going to get put into, um, like, get converted to zero, and everything greater than one is going to get converted to one. So a uh, problem here is that these numbers are all negative. So uh, what can I do to change that? Well, here's here's one way I can rescale it. So let's the smallest of these numbers is like this negative 120 approximately. So let me convert by adding plus 120. And the biggest of these is around 70, like this negative 69, or the biggest of these is around negative 70, I should say. So let me divide this by 50. So that this has the property that negative 120 goes to 0, and that negative 70 goes to 1. And so let's see, what, uh, what have I done wrong? Oh, I, I put this into the the wrong place. So that shouldn't have been inside the quantity magnitude, should have been outside the quantity magnitude. So I'll do the same thing, plus 120, and then divide it by 50. There, that looks better. And so uh, let's call this colors. And now I can do this exact same thing, but I'm going to use colors instead of longitudes. So I'm going to give this georegion value plot, I'm going to give it explicit colors. And when I'm giving it explicit colors, it doesn't make sense to specify a color function. So you can see how many more like gradations of color there are showing up in this map. So the trade-offs are that I had to do this rescaling manually, whereas I didn't have to do any rescaling back when I was giving georegion value plot these things. Uh, these degrees here. Uh, another advantage of the numeric version is that provides me with this legend over here on the right hand side, whereas mine doesn't have a legend. But personally, I think this kind of map looks a lot nicer. And I, th I really like the fact that we have so much more control over the colors in this case than we would have with, uh, with this previous version.